pledge allegiance yes. to the flag of the United States of America, America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Ah, and Betty Ann made it. So we're all here. Yay. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you all for for coming over tonight. I think this meeting is going to be more or less a, a kind of a summation of where we are, what we're doing. I see Doug is signed on. So, you know, the questions we we have, or he was going to get information on, we can, we can call upon him, obviously. So, um, well, Doug, let me, let me go to you first. How did you uh, make out? Did you get a hold of the chief and talk to him on any of the topics we, we discussed on Monday? Um, yeah, I, I just talked to him about five o'clock, but uh, he, he said that the, the body cameras, the cost went down and uh, said between a range of 90 to $100,000. He said that as far as the mandates go, that he has those built into his budget. And uh, you look through his budget detail, he has, he has money in training, he has money in uh, a second. purchase technical services. Okay. So he, he felt that uh, he felt he had the mandates covered and he did confirm that uh, you know, after we spend the money, we would get the 30% grant. Okay, now that, that, that's, that's excellent news because as I said before, Doug, um, if everything has to be paid for by July 1, which to me would mean you have to write a check June 29 or June 30th, uh, for the portion that would be chargeable to the... 2122 budget the the cash can go out the door but the expense you can put as a prepaid item on on your balance sheet and then the next day okay. you can reverse it into the uh, uh, the next day you can reverse it into the expense account because i don't want to i don't want to lose the chance of a 30 percent reimbursement on uh, ninety thousand bucks if uh you know if we don't have to yeah. Okay. Um, any, any, anything else, Doug, that we talked about you want to share? Um, no, I, I was uh, hoping the, I thought the Board of Ed was going to join us to talk about the crossing guards, but uh, doesn't look I like talk, it. I talked, I talked to, uh, Superintendent Wilson this afternoon, just as a happenstance, we we uh, ended up chatting, and the the crossing guard is obviously in the P police department budget. Uh, we're talking what looks to be roughly thirteen thousand dollars, and in looking at all of this, taking taking the thirteen out, and if something were to happen at the school from some walker or something happening with a kid that's crossing into the school or walking on the street and there was no one there um chances are the the town the town would be held you know to uh to account for it and you know let's let's look at thirteen thousand as more or less an insurance policy i mean nothing's perfect but for that kind of money, I would just as soon leave it alone and let them function as they have. Because uh, I think everybody on this call, and we've all said this at different times, that, uh, yeah, the buses can stop at every house, but that doesn't mean that every kid's going to get on. Some kids may still walk for whatever the reason. So just as a, just as a safety precaution, I'm, 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 I'm content to leave it alone. It's it's not worth the possible aggravation if something were to happen, and you know that position that position goes away. It's, we're not talking we're not talking fifty or hundred grand. Um, 
In that light, the other, the other couple that I, Rich, that I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I agree. I think that's kind of a good idea. 13,000 is oh, a okay, lot. Okay, thank you. We had to be liable for something that happened, so. Yeah, no, th thank you. Um, another, another item, I did talk to him because I was, as I said, I had gotten no emails from anyone at the board that Rory invited to the meeting tonight that they were coming or they weren't coming. But I broached the question with the superintendent and I said, look, you got five, 550 in and ESS money, ESSER money, let's call it. The guidelines based on the, what was forwarded to me, they're specific in terms of paying to try. One of the things is to recover lost student, lost student learning. I mean, you know, what did a kid miss because he wasn't in school? Do they need anything special? Um, at this point in time, and considering we've already, we've already cut the Board of Ed down, I think it's best to leave it alone, leave their budget alone and not tinker in, in a guess with, well, we can take 50 and they, we can take 50 out of their budget. Whoa, hello. We can, we can take 50 out of their budget and we know es ESSER will pay for it because if that, if that grant is ever examined by the, by the state, not to mention our top auditors in a year, if that, if that is examined and it's found that I brought up before about supplanting instead of supplementing money. Hey, hey Jay, I didn't see you there. If that, if that grant is audited and it was de it's determined that we've uh, supplanted some town money rather than supplement the town expenditures, then we're either writing a check back to the state or if they want to, they can also hold the town to account and, and lower other grants, not just education grants, but they can pretty much have a field day and lessen whatever kind of assistance this town gets. And uh, the, the impact of, of making a guess, I wouldn't wanna be comfortable to do it as to how much and um, I, I think it's probably best left the way it is. And I think, I think it's, you know, in, in, in the end, the, the Board of Ed in their original budget was asking close to 5%. We've halved it down to two and a half, or we've halved it down to two and a half, which it's, it's not bad, I don't think. And I think it's a fair amount that uh, you know we're we're providing for what they what they need. If in the end, if at the end of the day there's anything left over, we'd have to talk about possible reservations of it and all. But that's well, 15 months away, something like that. So we don't know that. The other the other bit of information I want to share tonight. I spoke as you all know uh, in the budget that Doug. The new version, as of uh, today, as a matter of fact, um, the new version of the budget. If you look at page twenty-four, uh, there's a line: contingency project and professional fees. We've talked. We've talked at some length, and I'm I'm sitting on the building committee, and I know Tim goes to these meetings too. Uh, about well, the library, the police department and the town hall are all involved. And one of the things we've chatted on was, well, are these really finished, those three buildings? In talking to Jim Baldwin, the building inspector today, as well as Tony Caserta, they said they were, and they are the town buildings. They did, they did say that the systems, heating, ventilation, water heater, boilers, and stuff like that, the stuff that's in there is under manufactured warranty for, I guess, any periods from five to 10 years, depending upon what the thing is. Uh, in that regard, one of the things I mentioned to them is we, I think we still need some kind of a little bit of fallback money. If for not for 
any of the particular three buildings, but maybe in a sense of some of the other old buildings we've got that if something occurs, we don't have to hit a panic button on. And what I'm proposing is to take that hundred that's in that line item and drop and drop it down to 35. Um, it's more as it is, it's a contingency. If we don't need it, we don't use it, but it's not such an egregious amount that it's going to tip the scales on the mill rate or anything like that to any real degree. But if we don't need a hundred and apparently in talking to Jim and to Tony today, um, we don't because those buildings are pretty much set. And now it's just a matter of some maintenance and structurally they Jim indicated that there may be some and Tim jump in please if I'm saying something incorrect but Jim indicated there may be some structural stuff apart from apart from what was done with the contract and the three buildings and all of that so I think putting 35 in is not not an egregious amount instead of 100 obviously Thoughts, comments, Tim, your take on all of this? Did I say anything that was offline or anything? You're, you're muted. Sorry, Can't so hear you're you. right online with that. There you go. No problem. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of the people that knows the least amount of anything to do with construction, but I know enough to ask enough questions, I hope. So thankfully... We don't have to have a hundred, which is a tenth of a mil, and we don't we don't necessarily we don't need that. So I'm just as happy not to have it in. But I think 35 as somewhat of a cushion, and that's such a bad thing. And if we don't use it, we don't spend it. Obviously, is there? Is there anything else? Um, thank you, Ed, and thank you, Jay, for uh, coming tonight from the board. Uh, I, I think before you signed on, I did mention I talked, I talked with Mike Wilson today on the ESSR money, the ESSER money. And at this stage of the game, no one really knows to take a, and to, to make an educated guess about taking money out of your regular budget, figuring that Esther is going to pay for it. And I did make and I did make the comment also that with these kinds of grants, there's a whole bunch of detailed record keeping, especially because it's COVID. Somebody's going to be looking with a magnifying glass, and if there's a determination made that the town was town's budget was adjusted to supplant money then the town may at the end of the day be writing a check back and that's one thing i i want to avoid at all costs uh, because that's not a good thing anything from anybody on the on the call so doug i would ask you if you would to take that i'm sorry did i so, yeah, go yeah, go ahead, Beth, please. On the budget. I just wanted to ask about the insurance. It's yeah. been advertised in all the papers that we only have an eight percent increase, but in the budget it's for eleven. Can you explain why? Or Doug? And Doug explain will, why it's going eleven with, with Doug, you would explain Doug, you'd you you'd ex Yeah, you'd explain that before, Doug. Can you do that again? Uh Sure. The, the, um, in the next budget uh, spreadsheet, I, what I'll do is change those percentages to reflect the first selectman's budget rather than the uh, department request. And then you'll see those percentages drop dramatically. Okay. That's what I want to make sure because I don't want the budget to go out and show that it's a uh, 11% increase when everybody's been advertising, it's only an 8% increase. I don't want anybody to come back at us. Also, I had another question on the town contributions under recreation. 
The Boys and Girls Club is not coming yep. back into town. Why are we giving them $5,000 in the budget? I will toss that uh, one back to Doug. I believe that yeah, would believe Anne Marie to, could, please. Uh, Anne Marie had explained that uh, uh, the Boys and Girls are no, uh, Club is no longer using the Seymour facilities. So that's one of the reasons why they've moved out of town. So she mm -hmm. dropped the, what she believes that they should get. Okay, but should we oh, so we're just talking a general contribution. To a Boys and Girls Club? Okay. Yeah. So this is, this is, so, so this is essentially to cover the town's piece of our kids using the Boys and Girls Club. Right. Okay, and where is the Boys and Girls Club gonna be located now? Okay. I think she said uh, Shelton. Okay, and the other question well, so, I had- So they're going back to that new building off of Howe Avenue? I believe so, yes. Okay, and the other okay. question- I'd Go like ahead, Bev, I'm sorry. The Christmas fireworks at the land trust, we put in $5,000, that's a new item this year. Mm -hmm. Why are we adding something when it's such a tight year? Thank because you. No. Doug. Uh, I I would guess that that's uh, Anne Marie felt that it was something that we needed to do and. Um, well, because I thought they had a free firework thing because the last time they had fireworks work and they were that company was supposed to give them a free. Firework. So why we would be paying another one? I, I can I can follow up and talk with uh, Alex on it and get some better answers. But to tell you the truth, I, I really am not well versed in the fireworks. Okay, and then my last question was, I didn't see any. I missed the meeting on Monday, and I didn't see anything on um, in the notes about why the high raise for the chief of staff and the resource officer. Um, the chief of staff uh, negotiated a contract with the, uh, with the board of selectmen, and that's that's his right of pay. Who who was the other person? Um, the human resource. Yeah, that's that's the same thing. He had he had negotiated a a new contract with the board of selectmen. Awful high percentages. One's a seventeen percent, and the other one's almost a thirty-two percent. Yeah. Awful high raise in one year. I believe, well, the the negotiations they had, they uh, they also gave up some vacation time and sick time and things like that. But um, I, I can uh, get the copy of the contracts and give them to you guys. Well, I, I would so like this to see where... What numbers are coming down and what other departments, you know? I can't hear you. I can't hear saying. Well, in, in, terms, in terms of the other departments, these are probably the odd, the odd department, Bev. Yeah. Because no one else has a human resource. No one else has a human resource director and he spans the town. Right. And, he, you know, no one's, no one else has a, Chief of Staff. Yeah, but he said they were going to. They gave up vacation pay. So where would that be credited for these high increases? My 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 guess is, and I can only guess at that, the town carries a liability for accrued vacation, uh -huh. sick and vacation, depending upon employees. So my right. guess is you won't see the numbers in this budget, but what you'll see is a liability going down on the balance sheet. 
which doesn't necessarily translate into what we're looking at here. No, I know. But Doug, if you can, if you can shoot out, shoot out to the board, the the genesis of both of the uh, salaries. Okay. Okay, and the other thing that three hundred thousand yeah, dollars. I think that would. A, yeah, I think that would be informative. Yeah, can we get a copy of that application so that we have it in our record for that three hundred thousand? Uh, sure. Okay. Thank you. So we know that it's been filed. And then, you know, everybody on the board, I would suggest keep your fingers crossed because that 300, you know, it could come in at four, hooray, could come in at two, which would be right. boo hiss. This 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 three hundred that we've been carrying is a is a best guess. Yeah, no, and, I know. Um, the state gets it. They've got yeah, they've got six months to audit it. There are a couple of boxes of materials that go into it, and again, depending upon who they send out and how they look at these things, we'll decide on what we get. I'm hoping for more than three, but you know, I've been disappointed before. Mm -hmm. Any anything else, Bev? Any no, other nothing. questions? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. I got it. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I do. Um, Go ahead, Rich. So, I, I, once again, I'm going to say the exact same thing that I said last week, and I think Bev is starting to touch on it a little bit based on what she was saying tonight. But I still think that these numbers are still a little too high, considering that we are in the middle of a pandemic and we have people that are struggling. So, again, I would like to see if we can make some more cuts in some of these areas, um, you know, so we can bring a little bit more meaningful relief to the people. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is that when you were talking about the Board of Ed budget, and you know, leaving it alone because it looked like we're you know, if we were to get audited, you know, that we would be, you know, essentially saying that, you know, we were using ECS funds to pick again, budget request items. I mean, so essentially what you're saying is that if we still felt that the Board of Ed budget was still a little bit too high, that we're technically beholden to the COVID virus rules of the ECS budget. I mean, how does that work? Because... no. I'm I'm te I'm telling you in terms of that grant, we're let's say beholden to the COVID virus rules, right? For lack but, of for lack of a better descriptor. So I'm just going to give you an example. Let's just say that you know we feel that we you know the board needs to be cut another like fifty thousand or something. Okay, how does how does that work though? Because if we cut them fifty thousand how are the auditors going to know that we're not using the guise of the ECS grant money to justify that cut and not just a, yeah, we still think it's too high because of X, Y, and things. I'm just gathering information using hypotheticals here, but. I mean, we can, we can pick a number of any number we want to give the board of ed. Okay. Right. There are constraints on minimum expenditures and all of that. Okay. Right. At, at, and they would have to, let's say, make their budget work. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's up to this board. I mean, we're in, you know, it's into, you know, they're at two and a half percent, which is probably the, you know, a common increase over the years if you stretch, if you average it out, but they're at two and a half percent. If this board said, well, let's cut 50 or 100 or whatever, they're still beholden to, they can't swap money from ESSER into their budget. I mean, I'm okay. just saying that so that's they can't, and I don't think they would and they shouldn't. So that, that's on their side. They, they would have to get it from, 
Yeah. So, okay. Just, just, I just wanted to be clear that if we decided as a board that we were going to cut that budget further, that it was not going to reflect negatively on us under the guise of the ECS rules, so to speak. No, that, no, there, there are two different things. The Board of Ed is responsible to administer the ESSER money for what the ESSER money has to be used for. The general fund budget is for, let's call it the non-ESSER expenses, the usual stuff, salaries, lights, maintenance, Mm -hmm. printer cartridges, whatever. Okay. So that's the two, the two roads. I mean, if COVID, di if COVID didn't exist, then we wouldn't be having this discussion. It, it, all, it would be like the discussion that is had every year that, okay, what's their budget? What do they need to exist? How much should we cut it? How much can we cut it? All of that with figuring, you know, the MER and, all of those state mandated numbers. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that if we were to decide as a board to cut their budget further, that it would not look and reflect negatively as we were doing that under the expression of the ECS grant. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think there'd be that connection i mean okay. certainly not from my perspective i mean over the over the years that we've gone through this it's what do we think a the taxpayers can absorb but still allow the board of education to accomplish what they want to accomplish and move move the school system forward because if the school system don't go forward we all suffer and right. you know is people with kids people with grandkids people that don't have kids you know, it impacts everybody. Okay. I mean, I, I do know from the budget summit that the board started out close to asking for close to 5%. 5%, which, right. which at the time was somewhere close to, yeah, it was somewhere close to, I forget what the, I forget what the number was exactly. Hold on. Yeah, they were asking somewhere in the area of about 880 some odd thousand dollars, which... Okay, that was you know close to five, and through looking at numbers and all, it's down to two and a half percent roughly. So effectively cutting, you know, almost cutting it in half. Okay. Now my next question in regards to I'm that not, is, you know, as I said over the years that that I, yeah. What is their basic bare minimum operating expenses? versus what they asked for in the budget like what is their bottom line to function pay all their contracts increases and meet the minimum state standards Do we figure on that i will turn that either to ed or to jay in terms of uh, in terms of numbers okay because I can't speak for the Board of Ed, obviously. I didn't know if we if we had that already, but Jay, Ed, go ahead. I'm looking to see if I have that any place right here. I mean, I don't know it off the top of my head. Jay? Let me just quickly look at the number. See if I can get the number. Hi, right, what's our bare minimum number? Hold on. Oh, 
I mean, I, I know, Rich, if you remember in the, pa the packet we got, when we, when we met, a lot of the big, for example, tuition is up $221,000, which kids outplaced, which that's a moving target. Right, right. Because, it, you know, two kids can, could come in and, you know, yeah, I'm just curious. Supplies a small increase, equip. Yeah, I'm just curious to see what the baseline. And one of the things that has to be considered too are whatever the, the initiatives, the newer initiatives in terms of swapping staff, people retire, people come on, and what's the impact on any new programs that they may or may not, you know, that we're not certainly involved in, but they are. Right. I mean, I, and I think as we said, going forward, Everybody on our board gets the problems that the that the people have had in town. That's it. Oh, okay. I mean, you know, the uh, every everybody's you know we're looking at we're looking at the budgets and things, and they've got. I'm reading this right. They've got. Two, four, they got five retirements. They're replacing them with what looks like one full time special ed teacher, four tenths of a ELA teacher, uh, four tenths of a music teacher, and one nurse as a floater. So, looking at their staffing stuff, uh, you know, doesn't look like there's a whole flood of new people coming in, for example. Mm -hmm. There may be other things in programs, uh, but the one, one thing you've got, one thing that we all as a board have to remember, and I think we mentioned this last time around, irrespective of if it's the board of police department or library or whomever, uh, we get that there's a pandemic. It's been rough on a lot of people. We get that. And we have, we have to do our best and make the best reasonable effort to still keep the town moving forward without like putting the brakes on everything and and just stopping because of a pandemic because quite honestly in the history as i know of this town and having been here quite a while once once things get dropped or slide over they don't ever seem to come back and, you know, you're, we've, we've had occasions where uh, it just doesn't work. And then you end up paying double and triple. I mean, the, the biggest, one of the biggest dollars, as I said, was the, was the cost for tuition for, for the kids that need it. And two can move into this town or five can move into this town. And then it becomes a financial scramble. We don't know. And the board doesn't know. I know that. I mean, if anybody knew, could predict that, we'd all buy lotto tickets if, if they were that clairvoyant. So, I mean, you know, we, we've asked for the number. If we can get it, we'll take a look and see what it is. Through, but on the surface, I'm, you know, go ahead. Through the chair. Okay. Thank you so much. I know um, Thought of it's me, Jay Halfield. Um, so, again, I, I, yep. I was looking for the number there. So currently, our number that we presented was 882568. It's a 2.55%. Yep. Um, that was the last number, I believe, that we sent to the board, minus the um, first select woman's cut of, and you could throw in that number for me, um, which would give us about, I think it was 189. So that would give us, Mr. Zawicki knows I'm not that good in math. Oh, sure you are. Don't sell yourself <laughs> short. Five, six, three, eight, seventeen. What was it, Mr. Demko? I'm sorry. Yeah, you. 
Yeah. Roughly, you would ask you you would ask for eight eighty more or eight eighty two, yes. for thirty five five fifty three. Just talking round numbers. Uh, the proposed, the recommended so far is thirty five three sixty four. So the difference is about one hundred eighty nine thousand. So instead of getting the eight eighty two, uh, it's it, the math works out to be about six. I want to say six ninety. Let me take a look. Is it, I have a tendency at times not to be good in math either. Uh, let me just take a peek. That is impossible, Bill. Yeah. Oh, don't bet on it. But anyhow, uh, let me see. I think I have it. I have it down here because I know I wrote. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Your request from 880 for 880. Three roughly more has been pared down to six ninety three, roughly a hundred ninety thousand dollar difference. Two point five percent. That's so, that's that's where we are now. So I just I, I called the superintendent quick and just said, hey, what's our you know with our updated numbers again, as we have a transition of no business manager at the current or excuse me somebody coming on. Very yep. quick. Um, he said, and through the uh, board chair, I, th I believe uh, two two five would be our our two five would be our bare minimum two five. Okay. Thank okay. you. Or excuse me. Okay. Or, or, yeah. So two five two. We have about five percent, I think, or five. And I'd have to get back to you again, but I think it's so. Five. You're. Yeah, I mean, we're 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 talking that I'm guessing from what you're telling me, the two point five five percent increase, I think, is where you are. So effectively, if I'm hearing it right, the recommended budget from the first select woman is your. It's called bare budget, bare bones budget. If I'm if I'm hearing it, because that's. That's the two point five five percent, right? Okay. Well, <clears throat> and with all due respect, I do believe that we have uh, we as a board, and I apologize if I interrupted you. We we as as a board have oh, really tried to cut it down as much as we possibly can with the country increases, and also being respectful of the fact that some. ESA money can help supplant, but again, does not supplement our budget. You know, so we have to really be careful of that balance. There's certain so many things that we could fit under that supplantation of that ESA money, but there's so many things that we still need that we can't fulfill without the help of the town budget. Oh, no, understood. And I appreciate okay. your comments before. Sorry. About no, no, not not an issue. Rich, anything or further? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it for now. Oh, the other, oh uh, yeah, that that is uh, the other thing I just wanted to inquire about is that a couple of years ago we started the turf fund, the uh, turf replacement fund. So we were talking about throwing ten grand in there every year. Um, I'm not seeing that in this this go around. Turf, 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 turf. Doug, what's the status on the, let's call it the turf project? I'll ask you to pull your crystal ball out. Or Tim, if you have any insight into any of this. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's 530. So it's 862. Yeah, it is. It's on page 24. Yeah, it's on page 24. It's at the top uh, under town capital non-recurring. I, I would have to defer to the uh, Board of Education or t Tim because uh, I don't have any information on the turf replacement. 
other than I think it's out like 10 years. Okay. What was that again? Can you repeat that? There was 10,000 in that line item for that? No, we've always talked about putting 10 in, but in terms of a project, um, what's kind of a, do we have a timeline on this thing? In it's, terms just, of when we're going to have to start to worry or anything like that? Yeah, we just did our refresher last last year. So I think it, again, it, okay. it depends on the usage and everything else. It's usually only good for 10 to 12 years, the field itself, but it depends okay. on maintenance, how much use. But the last, um, which Jordan from uh, Public Works handles that for us. He's in yep. charge of um, maintaining and, and calling and staying on top of it. But from the last one we, we had last year, we were still in good shape, but I don't know the exact, you know, you know, let's say due date that we're going to need to replace that field is right out as of now. And do, you, do you remember, Tim, what the cost of it was? For, for Jay? the whole field? He's raising his hand. For the whole field? Well, or for the, the part that if we would have to go in and re... Well, just for the part that we might have to replace regardless of time. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure that was before I started that field was put in. Um, I could look back. No, Jay, I, no, I realize that. that. I, I want to say through the uh, chair that I think it was about a hundred thousand, give or take. Um, you know, so the idea was that if we uh, put aside ten thousand a year, and I'm going to defer also to my colleague, uh, the chairman, Mr. Stramella, because he was on the committee <laughs> with me. But I think it was about the idea was ten thousand a year, so it was a hundred thousand okay. total. That if we put that. A, uh, aside and, and i just want to throw in if i could through the chair that i believe yeah there has been a lot of conversation that that money has been being put aside i'm not sure where or to what extent but before um and again i'm gonna ask my defer to my chair mr stramello but i think we've had conversations that it has been happening but he could fill me in a little bit more i think yeah, I think you're right on that, Jay. We've been trying to put the money aside. And and I guess if we want to say there's been a positive to the um, pandemic, we we haven't used the field a lot because we had no football this year. So, you know, that was a Where is that was a benefit. Let let me throw yeah. the question out then. Uh, if you've been putting if you've been putting bill, 10 sorry. aside every year, no, I'm sorry. Um, if, if you've been putting 10 aside a year, where, where is it? Let me ask you that. Yeah. Good question. I'm going to jump in through the chair um, that I don't believe it was necessarily our responsibility for that. I believe and I'm going to ask Mr. Thomas, if he could jump in, if that's okay through the chair, but I believe yeah. it was something that was worked yeah. out for the, from the former first electman, and um, I, I don't want to say the Board of Ed, but I kind of want to say, it. but I believe that was something that the former first electman had been putting in place because that was something that Mr. Stanek of our board was really harping on and really concerned about. And Mr. Stramello as well was really big on that. And we have had some correspondence, I remember saying that the first electman's office was taking care of it. Okay, Doug, I'll, I'll defer to you. Is it is it sitting someplace in a special revenue fund or in a capital projects fund, the money for yeah, this? It, it, yeah, it's sitting in the capital projects fund. So how, how much how much is there, and how did it and how did it get there? Because we I'm looking at the budget we're out. sitting in. in because we've got. We've got 10 in the budget in the year we're sitting in right now, 2021. So is it a matter that that 10 hasn't been moved over to the capital projects yet, Doug? Correct. Um, yeah, I'm doing that uh, tomorrow. And uh, we had 2,500 okay. the year before that. So it's up to $12,000. Okay, then... So we've got so it'll be twelve thousand five hundred as of tomorrow when you move the money. Correct. In in that in that regard, 
uh, I'd like to keep a good thing going, to be honest with you, just to, you know, be consistent with this. And uh, thank you, Rich, for bringing it up. But I would, I would propose we put another 10 in that line item for turf replacement. Hey, Bill, if I may. Trying again to plan down the road. So I'm sorry, go ahead. Bill, Tim. sorry about that. Um, I'll reach out to Jordan tomorrow to see where we stand on life, lifetime of that, what we have left on that field. Because you might want to, if we got five years, okay. we might start budgeting a little bit differently, but I'll get you a number tomorrow or the next day just to see where okay. we stand in uh, a ballpark number that we could, you know, you could use and then you can okay. decide from there where we stand and what we need to add to this or take away or how many years okay. we need to plan ahead to just get, and, get ahead of it. Okay. I, th I think, and Doug, again, yeah. depending upon the, and if you can also feed that number, Tim, if you can feed that number to also Doug in addition to myself, um, one of the things, one of the things, depending on that number, Doug, we've got a line item in for the OPEB trust fund of 50. So we don't, so we don't have to increase the budget we're sitting with, depending upon that number that Tim comes out for now, let's plan on reducing, taking it out of OPEB trust fund and putting it up into turf as long as the number is a reasonable number. Okay. <clears throat> so since- Cause you know, I, I just assume not to not, go ahead, Rich. Since we have 12,500 in there, which to me sounds like kind of odd amount, instead of putting the full, full 10,000 in this year, why don't we do 7,500? to make it an even 20 grand in that account for two years worth of turf replacement savings, so to speak. I don't care. 2,500 is not a big, not a big deal on 50 million. Uh, no, but you know, look, when we keep well, saying, you know, 5,000 is not a big deal. 2,000 is not a big deal, but when you add it all up, it becomes a big deal at this point, you know? Um, but yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm just saying to keep things simple, you know, make it an even 20,000 if we put in the 7,500 this year instead of 10. Well, let, you know, let's, let's, let's do, and then let's do this. And Tim, you don't have to go crazy with, with running around. We'll take the numbers that you said, you know, find out what the numbers are for now to Rich's point then, Let's take 7,500 out of the OPEB trust and put it up into turf, turf replacement. And then that'll give us 20. If Tim, you come back and say, well, gee, we only got four years left and we need 110. Then as we're having this friendly discussion in a year, we may have to do something a little bit different. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Okay, Doug. Okay. Okay. And Thank this way you. we don't impact Thank the you all. where we sit. Thank you guys. Oh, okay. Anything else, Rich? I, I think I'm good for now. Okay, here's here's the plan. Here's here's what I'd like to have happen. We're not getting together Monday, obviously. Um uh, we have our meet, regular meeting on Tuesday. What I'd like to do is, Doug, after you make the changes to the contingency, uh, you know, lowering the 100 down to 40, taking a 7,500, moving it around, I'd like you to rerun the reports so we'll have them. And then okay. we'll, we'll get to see we'll get to see, you know, recalculate the, the property tax mill rate. It's now, as we're looking at the latest and greatest, it's a 34.84. My sense is that number is going to go down a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little bit. And then let's see where we are with this. So Wednesday night, a week from now, when we get together, 
barring any real concerns or information that you know jumps off the page at us that you know oh boy we got to do whatever uh then we will you know possibly possibly get into saying uh all those in favor say aye on this anybody have any thoughts on that does it make sense does it make sense uh different ideas or suggestions yeah, I got something. That sounds good. Uh, I think when we get together next, though, I'm probably going to have a few recommendations as a, things that I would like to see cut as well a little further. Um, you know, but that we can all discuss once we get together next. So. Okay. All right. Uh, that being said, anybody else? Bev, Jim, Betty Ann, Chris, anybody? At no, all? Betty Ann's good. I'm good. Okay. Bill, this right. is well, Jim. I have a question. Then uh, that being Go ahead. On, uh, I was just curious on a number for expenses. I think it's for the Board of Ed, the total number. Yep. I'm reading this right. Is that yep. nine hundred twenty-nine thousand? Yep. Wow. Okay. No, no. The 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 difference the the bud the difference in the budget between what the board of ed originally asked for and what so far we have is one hundred eighty-nine thousand dollars. Is that maybe what you're looking at? Maybe the print didn't come out well. Yeah, it doesn't look like it came out too good. Yeah, that that's just a different difference column between what the departments asked for and what we're dealing with, what we we're recommending. No, this I'm talking about the actual uh, list of all the expenses for supplies and salaries and overtime. Is that the board of ed listing? It was part of that packet In with all the, the uh, questions. Yeah, the I mean. The, the packet, the Board of Ed only only is shown as one line item. It's on page 26. It's the second to the last number. 35363 is their budget. Right, but the... And they asked for 35552. Right, I'm just looking at the list of supplies of expenses for COVID. That printout we got. Oh, that was like nine hundred. Oh, oh, that list. Yeah, is that I'm reading that yeah, nine hundred thousand. That's conceivable. Yeah. Yeah, that's hundred thousand. Uh -huh. Could yeah. be. Well, that's, yeah, it's close to a million bucks. I know that. Yeah, and that's only up till December. They haven't done so January only, or February. Yeah. So this could be. I like mean, you can only 1. imagine 1. What, what the big cities are paying. It is a lot. Like it's possible. Yeah. I mean, it's a wow. lot of coin. It's a lot of coin. It, wow. It could be. You know. Uh, you know. Hopefully, with this relief package, everybody's talking about and things that some money will float out of float out of the state of Connecticut down to this town to help out. You know, nobody knows at this point, but you know, fingers crossed. Right. Right. Yeah, and I agree with what you were saying before too. So. All right. Any anyone else? Okay. If if not, we'll go to Rich's favorite part of the meeting, and uh, or workshop, I should say. So, take it away, Rich. I told you, I'm not doing that anymore. It's somebody else's job. That's it. I make a motion, Betty Ann, that we adjourn. Fine. I'll second it. I'll second it. You want at least Good for you? What a what a guy. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Stay safe and we'll see everybody on Wednesday. Take care. Thank you, Bill, for everything you do. Thank you. Good night.